Well, this is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Herodimos. In our last video on linear programming, we obtained all the inequalities, the system of inequalities for this uh, problem. So now what we're going to do is graph this. All right, so I'm going to show you how it is I'm going to graph these inequalities. Uh, and the way I'm going to do it is actually make a t-table for both of those. So, for instance, to make a t-table, I uh, draw a little table tiny little table. As a matter of fact, this is going to be a very small table, uh, as you'll see why. I put x and y there. Uh, first thing I do is I put it a 0 in for x. So imagine putting in a 0 here. So imagine putting a 0 there. Something plus y. Actually, 0 plus something. Get this thing right. So 0 plus something is equal to 100. So it's got to be 0 plus 100, right? So it's got to be 100 for y. So I'm going to put 100 right in here. And likewise, I'm going to do the same thing in the other uh, direction. I'm going to put a 0 in for y. I'm going to say something plus 0 is equal to 100. So it's got to be 100 plus 0 is equal to 100. So the x has to be 100. All right, so what I'm going to do is graph this in a moment. Uh, I know that's kind of hard to see. matter of fact, I'm going to change that. So we can actually see that number there. All right. Next, what we're going to do is make another t-table for this one, for that line. So I'm going to make this tiny little t-table. It's like a shrunken little table. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We put in a 0 for x. So I put a 0 in here. And then I do some algebra. I'd say, well, this, is, this you know, term is gone. I'm trying to think of 3 times something equals 150. 3 times, what is 150? It's got to be 50. So I'm going to put a 5 right there, 50 actually right there. So that is a 50. You know, it doesn't look like it. Let me try that again. So let's put a 50 there. There you go. That looks better. All right. Um, oops. You know, I should have uh, put the 50 before. Let's try that again. There we go. We've got a 50 there. All right, now let's do the same thing in the other direction. Let's put a 0 for y. So I'm going to put a 0 right here. We know 3 times 0, this whole thing is 0. So something plus 0 is equal to 150. So it's got to be 150 plus 0 is 150. So it's got to be a 150 here. And again, I did the same thing. Let's suppose I erase that first. There we go. So it's going to be a 150 there. All right, so I've got my t-tables. And these are actually graphing by intercepts, one of the methods that you use for graphing. You'll notice that the largest number that we see here is a 150, and it's for x. So I know the largest number I need to put on the x-axis is 150. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a 150 right here. And it looks like I could break up this thing into thirds. And I'm hoping I could do this just by eyeballing it. Make it look decent by thirds. Yep, that looks like it's broken up into thirds nicely. So this would be 50. Right, that's 50. And that would be 100. All right, so I got 50, 100, 150. Everything looks like it's good there. And it looks like the other largest number I have on the uh, y-axis would be 100. So I could go up to 100 over here. And for this one, just to make the numbers work right, I could break that in half, break that half and half again, that would be 25, then halfway between 50 and 100 is 75. All right, so this will help us, uh, it'll help me graph these uh, points right. All right, so let's see, let's, how are we going to graph this first one right here? So if I graph this, and as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this line in blue. Okay, so I'm going to graph it in blue. All right, so let's get the first point, right? I'm going to try to do that point right there. So 0, 100 is right here. Uh, let's see, 100, 0 is right here. And I'm going to connect these. Now, this is the hard part, drawing this by hand. So I'm going to try my best to do this. And that's about as good as that's going to get. I've got a line there. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Now I get the next one. So 0, 50. I'll number them. So this is number 1. This will be number 2. Okay, so let's go 0, 50. All right, let's go 150, 0. Let's try that. There we go. Close enough. All right, so not perfect, but we get the point. Uh, all right, let's get to line number three. Right here. So line three is x equals something alone. That's going to be vertical. So that's going to go through 20. Now I'm going to guess that it's somewhere, 20 somewhere around here on the x-axis. All right, it's hard to do this by freehand here. Digitally, I, don't, I can't put a ruler up there. All right, well, close enough, right? There we go. It's easier when you have a ruler to work with. And our fourth one. Our fourth one, which is y equals 0. Turns out y equals 0 is a horizontal line, and it's actually the x-axis. But uh, you get the point, right? It's just going right across the x-axis. All right. So it turns out that we do have you know, several places and we're going to have to determine where to shade and that's going to be the next video. Okay, so we just had to remember that this was a vertical line and this was a horizontal line. Okay, so when the Y is alone, it's horizontal. When the X is alone, it's vertical. The other ones I just use little T-tables. You could have solved these for Y and graphed them once they're in slope-intercept form. It's one thing we could have done also. All right, so that's how you graph. And if you take a look at our next video on linear programming, you'll see how to figure out how to shade.